let's let's move to uh, smaller amounts of money. Just just. 20 million euros, which is the price that uh, Liverpool or the money that Liverpool could get from selling Firmino to Juventus. Mm. Um, what do you think about this trade? Would it be good for Liverpool to let go of that player? He's not supposed to have as many minutes as he used to uh, in mm. previous seasons. Uh, is it a good fit for, for Juventus as well? Look, I think... I think there's no question that Firmino has been absolutely fantastic for Liverpool. Probably mm -hmm. the last, probably the last eighteen months though, he's his form hasn't been particularly good, uh, and that's why they've gone and got Nunes. Let's be honest. Yeah. Um. The question is, do Liverpool want to sell him? Uh, and if they do, twenty million, I think, is very reasonable for a guy of his quality. I'm not sure Juventus would be the right move for Firmino. I mean, where's he going to play? You know, he's He's perfect, in my opinion, if he plays with a partner or if he plays in the front three. Mm -hmm. I'm not so sure that Juventus are going to play with, with two up front. I mean, uh, Vajovic, because yeah. Vajovic has to play. So I'm not quite sure that Juventus is the right move for Firmino. I think for Firmino himself, a move is the best thing if he wants to play. Uh, but to Juventus, I think it's the wrong move. But for 20 million, that's a bargain. Yeah, it is. It is. The Juventus are looking for a partner to Dusan Blaovic because based on what we've seen so far during the preseason, they're going to play 4-4-2 and they want a partner after losing uh, Morata. That possibility, that chance of Firmino going to Juventus blocks the road for Timo Werner, who now seems to be closer to Newcastle. Is that a good move for, for the German? Um, I would, I would, well, I, I, first of all, I don't understand why Juventus would, would sign Timo, Timo Werner. He's clearly not a centre forward. He's clearly not a guy. I, I don't think he's good through the middle. I think he's way better coming from a wide area. Oh, from and the left, already, yeah. yeah, and they've already got Chiesa there and, and, and Di Maria. So why, why Juventus there? Newcastle would probably be a better fit for him. There's no question he would start off probably guaranteed to, to be a starter, which he's not at Chelsea. So that would be a good move for him. Whether it's a good move for, for Newcastle, I'm not so sure because he really hasn't done enough in a in a blue Chelsea jersey to suggest that you go and get him and and you can rely on him to 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 be well number one to, to score you enough goals. Yeah. And to be consistent because he hasn't been consistent. So uh, it's probably a good move for Werner. Not such a good one for Newcastle. Mm -hmm. I think that the best move for, for Werner would go back to Germany, even if it's at Leipzig or at Dortmund. Who, they play that quick transition game that, that would fit perfectly for, for him. So you mentioned Chelsea. Uh, let's talk about them. They, again, got outbidded by Barcelona. They're missing Jules Koundé. Um, one of their targets after missing Rafinha again uh, to the to the Blaugranas, uh, they're now putting their setting their eyes on Wesley Fofana, the French uh, central defender of of Leicester City. Is that a good alternative for Jules Kounde? No. <laughs> <laughs> Straight and simple. I, I I don't think Fofana has has he certainly hasn't reached his potential. Uh, and I don't think he's reached a consistent level for, for for Leicester in particular, that you, as one of the bigger teams in the Premier League, a team that are expected to win every time they step on the field, a team that are expected to have a, a level of performance every single time they step on the field, I don't think he's reached that level yet. Yes, mm. he's had some good games. His first season in the Premier League, he looked apart. Uh, he had a lot of injuries last year. I, I don't think he's matured enough. You know, I think I think of Van Dyke. You know, he went he went through the Celtic phase. He goes to the Premier League with Southampton. Mm -hmm. He reaches a level where you know exactly what you're getting. And Chelsea have to know what they're getting from their their players. And yeah. certainly, they need to know what they're getting defensively. And I don't think Fafana is ready for that yet. I don't think he's his game is matured enough for him to go to a team 
uh, of the expectations of Chelsea and consistently produce what's expected from them. So I, I, I agree. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They, they need to sign a final product instead Correct. of a prospect because they, yeah. they need him to start producing since day one. Uh, let's move on to another name from Leicester City, James Madison. He's been linked with Tottenham Hotspurs. Would it be a good move? Would it, would he fit under Antonio Conte's system? No. <laughs> James Madison, Antonio Conte, it's not, It, it doesn't seem to fit, does it? Like water and oil, they they, oh. they don't <laughs> they don't mix up. <laughs> Definitely, uh, yeah. He, I don't think he's he's the type of player that, that that suits Conte. You know, as as good as Madison can be, mm -hmm. again, he's in a position. He's in a position where right now he should be more consistent than he is. He's he's not a fledgling in the Premier League anymore. He's had a, he's had two or three seasons under his belt. Yeah, he's had some injuries as well. Um, so I, I just I just don't see the mix. I don't see where he fits in. I think I think Betancourt is is kind of solidified in the middle of the park for them, mm -hmm. uh, and it's and it's him and two others. So I, it, it makes no sense for me. Madison Madison is too flighty. He's too in and out. And his personality and the way he plays the game for me does not suit Conte. Well, but it would be it would be a fun story to follow if, if he goes to Tottenham because the, their clashes would be epic. I, I totally agree. Well, there is there is there is that little smidge that he could change his game, you know. And if and if Madison could add a little bit of the Conte drive to his game, uh -huh. he, would, he would become a different ball game completely. Oh yeah, absolutely. If he could wow. take some of Conte's uh, aggressive ag yeah. aggression and 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 that uh, work ethics of the ball, yeah, yeah, he could be a better player. Yeah. I, I totally yeah. agree. Let's move to Everton. They're trying to rebuild their squad. Mm. They're about to sign Dwight McNeil from Barley. What do you think about this 22-year-old winger? You know, Dwight McNeil, two or three years ago, came on the scene, and everybody thought this 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 guy's a prospect, but he just Whether it's because it's he's the team he's playing in, uh, the way Burnley play, he, he hasn't quite taken that next step. Mm -hmm. He had a he had a tough time last year with Burnley. Um, he be, if if I remember correctly, he became a he became a bit of a target for the Boo Boys at Burnley at one stage. Um, I, again, I'm not I'm not sure you, you you know what you're getting when you sign McNeil. And at Everton, of all teams, you know, we talk about the Chelsea's and the Liverpool's and mm -hmm. the City's about they have to have a level of performance. Well, right now, Everton, although they're fishing in a different pool to these teams I mentioned, they have to bring in players who they know what they're going to get because Everton right now are teetering on the brink. They don't look to have much of a squad. Um, they let Richardson go of all of all players. Yes. The, the, one, the one player who you know will score goals for them. Uh, a guy who kind of inspires everybody around with his work rate. And so there's a big hole missing at Everton. And I'm afraid McNeil doesn't fill that. Um, and he doesn't fill it as far as his production's concerned. You're not quite sure what you're getting. So, again, it would be a gamble. Um, he's got potential, but it would be a gamble. Yeah, and... and... Everton need to be very spot on with their signing, especially after their last season, which was terrible. And let's uh, move on to the... They cannot, they cannot afford... <laughs> they've, in the last three, four, five seasons, the amount of players they've bought who have turned out to be duds yeah. has to end. Because if it doesn't and they keep doing it, then they will get relegated both year. Yeah. I totally agree. And let's uh, let's finish the, the segment with... A goalkeeper with Bernd Leno, the German goalkeeper that is very close to move from Arsenal to Fulham. Um, yeah. it, it's a step down for him, but it's a great upgrade for Fulham between the sticks. Well, I, I would argue it's a step down for him. Uh, the fact is, is he's sitting on his backside uh, mm. at Arsenal, watching Arsenal playing. Yeah. You know, so to be able to go and play number one, but to be able to stay in the Premier League uh, and play there would be fantastic for Bernd Leno himself. I think it would be a great move for Fulham to get an experienced goalkeeper, somebody 
somebody who straight off the bat will calm everybody down. Uh, you know, there's a reason why he's not playing at Arsenal, but at the same time, he's a step up from what Fulham have, uh, and he'll be a great influence, not just not just on the field when they're playing, but certainly in the dressing room. Um, so, yeah, I think this would be a smart move. It would be a good move, and I think everybody wins. Fulham wins, and certainly Bert Leno wins. It's a win-win situation for them. These are the verdicts from my friend Stevie Nico about the transfer, transfer rumors of today. Stay tuned. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.